He doesn't hear you. Down the hall, but I just don't hear him. No, I don't think so. Open him up wider. Dr. John McMahon, emergency physician, instructs his intern on how to reduce a dislocated jaw. The intern is pushing down and backwards while opening the mouth. The patient dislocated his jaw while yawning. He had had prior jaw surgery after a mandible fracture. That, then pull it back up. Is he biting you? Yeah, he is. Hard or not? Not too hard. Man. So we're going to talk about uh, TMJ or jaw dislocations. We just finished Journal Club, and uh, it, was a good, it was a good Journal Club. Good Journal yeah. Club. It was good. Yeah, good journal club. So, yes, we learned a lot. So introduce yourselves, if you would. Okay, my name is Monica Mitta. I'm a third year medical student going into emergency medicine. And I'm Justin Rich. I'm a third year medical student going into emergency medicine. Uh, Monica, can you start us out here? Tell us a little bit about them. So acute TMJ dislocations, also known as lockjaw, aren't a very common problem seen in the emergency department, but can be managed easily with manual reduction. It's a problem that causes a lot of pain and anxiety to patients. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there's some muscle spasms going on in here too. So, um, so Justin, what exactly makes the jaw dislocate? Well, talking about the TMJ, the TMJ is a joint between the mandible and the temporal bone. And when we open our mouth normally, the condyle of the mandible moves forward within the glenoid fossa. So when you have a dislocation, the condyle of the mandible can become dislocated when it moves past the articular eminence of the temporal bone and cannot move back to its normal position. So, Mo, how does this happen? So, it can be caused by a number of things. Um, trauma is one thing that can cause the dislocation. Also, things that over open the jaw, like yawning, um, vomiting, seizures, laughing, kissing, singing. And it can also happen during medical procedures, like intubation, bronchoscopy, or even dental procedures. Oh, that's got to be a bummer when that happens. But there are also some other risk factors that go into that and make you more prone to TMJ dislocations. Yeah. Um, so if you've had a dislocation in the past, you're at higher risk. Um, you're also at higher risk if you have some structural defects on certain bones in the face, um, certain connective tissue disorders such as Ehlers-Danlos and Marfan syndrome. Um, some neuromuscular diseases as well as being advanced age can put you at risk for having TMJ dislocation. And so Mo, um, are there different types of TMJ dislocations? Yeah, so they can be classified as acute, chronic, or recurrent, and um, dislocations can happen a different number of ways. They can be dislocated anterior, posterior, lateral, or even superior to the articular eminence. Um, so superior dislocations can be associated with damage to cranial nerves. Um, lateral dislocations can be associated with mandibular fractures. Uh, posterior dislocations happen uh, often when the jaw is directly hit, and anterior dislocations are the most common ones that you're going to see. What do you do when you first meet a patient that appears to have a TMJ dislocation? You want to try to get a history as best you can, which might be difficult if they can't talk. Um, some, uh, a lot of times people with TMJ dislocation will present with preauricular pain, also difficulty closing their mouth, which can lead to symptoms such as um, such as drooling as well as um, difficulty speaking. Okay, good, good. So then on physical exam, patients can have some tenderness or even an indentation on their TMJ joint. Uh, you're gonna wanna do a neuro exam to check for nerve damage, and obviously you wanna check for um, trauma, some fractures. The best modality in this case is going to be CT. There's a lot of overlapping with structures on X-ray. Uh, so if there's fractures and trauma involved, then you want to get ENT and surgery on board. Okay, so uh, it's time for reduction. How are we going to do this, Justin? Let's make the patient comfortable first. Some um, good okay. starting medications would be midazolam and fentanyl. Um, a great anesthetic would be IV propofol, which is great because it has a short half-life and it's also an anti-emetic. Um, a couple ways you can reduce a dislocation. The one that we show in our case is also the most common one is an intraoral bimanual method. This involves wearing gloves, wrapping your thumbs in gauze for protection from bite, and placing your thumbs far back on the molar, lower molars as possible, 
and then getting a good grip, you want to pull the mandible, push the mandible down and back, and that can be a great way to relocate the jaw. Okay, good enough. All right, well, thanks so much for uh, helping out with this video. Your teeth closed? Mm -hmm. Did anything move already? Did it move already? See if it'll pull. Mm -hmm. See what? Could you feel it move at all? The, the jaw? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, not really. No, now I do. Okay. Close, I close his teeth. See close if they close. Teeth. See if they close. You'll be able to tell when you pull it back up. Get your thumbs out and close his mouth. It's in. It's in. See? Success and your thumb and your uh, and your and your and your thumbs are still intact. Let's we'll see the thumb. Good. All right. What's coming in? All right. You went to sleep about 10 minutes ago. You feel okay now? You okay? You good? We'll go get your paperwork done. We'll let you get out of here in a little bit. Okay. All right, buddy. All right. So uh, we're actually going to have a little discussion here about uh, jaw dislocations. And, um, oh, come on, cut. <laughs> okay.